okay, I got something special in the flashback machine today. I've been waiting to do this video for a long time. Oh, about four years ago, my wife got me a set of four of these things off of Amazon. And there was, must have been some crate sitting somewhere. Uh, and these were brand new in their original uh, two retail shipping crate. And she got me four of them uh, because I had ranted and raved about, I don't know, how cool they were uh, to her. And she went and found them. So uh, I don't think you'd be able to find them now. So I'm going to archive this for future generations of humanoids to be able to reference. So, oh my god, is that a cell phone? So yeah, um, 1996. V-Link. Do you remember? Do you? Do you think you remember? V-Link. So this was marketed very, very briefly uh, as the cell phone for teens, for high schoolers. Um, but it's not a cell phone. Oh no. This is a glorified part 15, probably 48 megahertz walkie-talkie. It was just too ahead of its time to be successful. Uh, it, well, we're going to talk about it. So this is V-Link, right? Okay. Uh, well, yeah. So here they are. I'm, le I'm letting you take in the um, retro goodness. Maybe you'll remember the commercials that were like 10 seconds long. And they were like, you know, these pictures you can see here, these teenagers being very hip. And uh, it was just like commercials like 10 seconds because I guess that's all they could afford. And it was like V-Link. The more people you connect to, the larger your network gets. Be cool collect all four, you know, that kind of a thing. It was like, and then I'm like intrigued. I want that. So you could only get these at like high end toy retailers and stuff. Like I only ever saw them at Toys R Us, but behind the glass Toys R Us, you know, that section of Toys R Us, that desolate section where stuff's behind glass. And if you want to see it, you have to like roll up with a driver and a Mercedes and like have your guard ask someone to open the key for you. Um, yeah, it was, it was behind the glass with like TurboGrafx-16 and stuff like that. So these were marketed as the cell phone. I don't want to say alternative because uh, cell, phones, cell phones weren't ubiquitous yet. And very few kids had them other than the ones these kids on the box are pretending to be. And so uh, this was the idea was like if you're in high school or junior high, like be like the big grown-ups and have your own cell phone. And man, it could have worked, but it was just ahead of its time. So let's take a look at the back of a box here and, and see what it says. Let's just start with that. I'm going to try to get this in frame here. Uh, it says, uh, let's see if I can get this focused in here. All right, a lot of fun here. All right, I'm going to turn them aside a little bit because I have the flash on. So I have like, you know, keep on the move with V-Link, personal voice link system. Join the V-Link network and know what's happening up to three blocks away. Link up at school, the mall your neighborhood or anywhere. No matter where you are, stay linked to other V-Links and never miss a beat for color choices. If that's not sales pitch, I don't know what is. It says communication will never be the same, patent pending. Allows a real link, con voice conversation link. Uh, set your personal number, you got a four digit personal number you could set. Uh, live talk, or you could send a message. You could send a message, a voicemail to another phone in your V-Link network. Live record, uh, you know, just press the button, record what you want, send it out to somebody. Um, what else does it have here? Just press play to listen to messages. So it's like, you know, you could actually have incoming messages on this. Uh, LCD screen, which we're gonna take a look at, public or private, so you could have like broadcast mode or like party mode. Uh, and then you could also have private mode. You could send a specific number with a specific person, uh, talk to that person, uh, beep or vibrate modes, and uh, yeah. Now it also had a battery charger and uh, an external battery that you could get, which probably, probably nickel metal hydride, but may not have been. But of course that wouldn't work anymore. It's been, you know, we're going on 25 years or so. Um, but, you know, they came with these AAA or AA battery packs, these little humpbacks on them. So let's take a look. Let's start with uh, pink V-Link. So to turn it on, got this cartoonish green button on top here. So I'm going to turn it on, put it on high. I don't know why you'd put it on low. And it boots up and we get this nice screen here uh, that's waiting for a number. 
and you can input a number or you can do a broadcast call. There's also a backlight. I'm not going to put it on because you're not going to be able to see it, but there's a backlight. It'll just be a green backlight like a 1990s phone. And then you've got numbers that go up to six because you can't have more than four digits anyway, so they just stopped at six, I guess. Uh, there's a send all button. There's a my number reference button. I guess my number is one right now. If I hit my number, it says I'm one. I think the other one is set as, as two. There's public, private, there's live record, and then there's beep. Let's do a live record here. Let's see if I can do that. So I don't know why live, and then you push say. So I'm going to say something, and then I'll play it back. There you go. I'm not sure you could, if you could hear that, but uh, let's see here. Give me the microphone. So yeah, that's great quality sound. And uh, that's how they work. So I'll turn on the other one, and this is probably channel two. That one boots up, and I go to my number, and it says two. So now I can talk from one to the other. Now to do that, you would have to push your V-Link button on the side here. Let's see if I can get that in focus. I apologize if this is popping in and out of focus. Uh, this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 4, which has a great camera, but it's 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 dying. All right, so I talk from one to the other. So I'm going to put this black one up to my microphone, and I'll talk into the pink one and see how it comes out. So yeah, there's transmit, and I'm sure it sounds lovely, but that's uh, as good as it got. So the idea here was, uh, if all of your friends, apparently up to three blocks away, had one, you could all talk to each other. And they implied, and here's the thing, they implied that the more of these you had, the more um, V-links that you had, the longer uh, your reach would be. So if you had, you know, let's say somebody a block away, and then someone a block away from them, and then someone a block away from them, and someone a block away from them, you would expand your network. They called it a network. Now, here's the thing. I haven't tried it, and if I do try it, I will make a video or update this video. I highly doubt that these were truly networked, um, that the expansion of the network would depend. You could actually get up to three blocks away, and you could, you could increase that by having more people on board. Absolutely not. These are part 15 um, walkie-talkies, which means these have the quality of sound that the walkie-talkies, the Barbie walkie-talkies, or G.I. Joe walkie-talkies had when you were four years old that took a nine-volt battery, that's what's in these. Um, they have about the same quality of sound and the same range. However, they do have voicemail, and it does work. You can send voicemail to each other. You can play back voicemail. Um, there is, you know, that public-private line. That's real. I mean, you can really do that. The problem is the range. Um, in an office building, I had to be literally in line of sight. So we have a really long hallway in the building where we do our, our videos here. And that hallway is probably, I don't know, 100 feet. And Ashley and I had one walkie-talkie each, one V-Link each, and we stood at each end. And as long as we could physically see each other, we could get the signal through to a point. There was actually a point in the building that we were too far away, but we could see each other, and we weren't going to get the signal through extremely weak. And here's why. These came out before FRS, Family Radio Service. Radio Shack, which has nothing to do with this product, um, basically invented Family Radio Service, which led to the ubiquity of all those little pocket radios people have now to communicate, and GMRS radios, and um, the FRS Family Radio was able to talk up to a quarter of a mile. Um, it's VHF and uh, much better FM transmission. Um, I doubt these are FM transmission. They're probably AM. Um, I'm almost certain they're AM. Uh, FRS made these obsolete before cell phones made these obsolete. Uh, FRS doesn't allow you to do things like forward voicemail because that would be data, although Radio Shack sort of, kind of played around with that a little bit, and they even had flip versions of FRS radios that look like little phones. Um, but had these come out in the era of FRS just a couple years later, they would have been fantastic. 
They would have had a quarter of a mile range. They would have had crystal clear voice clarity. Um, and they, they would have worked to a degree that um, I don't think they could have staved off cell phones. What ended up having to really kill this, not only FRS happened, but kids didn't embrace that either. They just went out and got cell phones. I mean, by 2003 or four, yeah, cell phones were in everybody's possession. Um, and these were sort of like, the idea was, why shouldn't a younger person have something like a cell phone? Of course, they'd want one, but there's a fee and you have to have a credit check and your parents aren't going to get you a cell phone and all this stuff. And uh, so it made sense, but unfortunately, the technology wasn't there. Part 15 basically means that these things have to be receptive to any interference that comes across them. They can't be shielded, um, which means the sound is going to suck, and it, it did. Um, and it can't really put out enough power to be useful because it's not allowed to interfere with other equipment that is not part 15. So they were doomed from the start, but man, did they try. These are really well built. I mean, they don't feel like the build of like a, a late 90s Nokia, but they certainly did. I mean, they're sort of toyish, but not quite. I had one, I was about 20 years old, and I went out and I got a couple of them because at that time, they were already doomed. I mean, it was well past 90s, probably like 1998, 1999. And they went down to like 70 bucks each, down to, yeah, there's the other problem. They started probably at about 300 bucks each. Right? So who is gonna, $300. So uh, I got them for like 70 each and I tried them and back they went to the, to the store. I, I, you couldn't even get like across my street to the corner on a bright sunny day. You could just be, you could just have the conversation with the person across the street vocally rather than have these because these wouldn't work. Um, and man, that sucks because they really could have been awesome. And I have them now because I think they were so awesome. My original intention with these, especially for my channel, was to strip them down and say, well, what if? We have the technology now to put like an Arduino or a, in this case, like a, a small Raspberry Pi and make these do, I mean, these could be cell phones. I could turn them into cell phones. Like I could buy a 3G kit and just shove it in there. But that would be, I don't know, not very elegant. Um, I would like to take two of them and make them do what they really could have done, wanted to do, um, and see what I can make of it. Um, I mean, that's a major project. I'd, you know, you'd have to get the keyboard wired correctly to the LCD and have the LCD wired to the computer. It could be done. Uh, it's a possibility for my channel. I'd like to hear if anybody would like to see it done. Otherwise, you know, they're cool. And I have four of them, and they're just very cool, um, collectability-wise. I have them. But I could also, you know, I have two black ones, so, uh, you know, um, I could take it apart and do something cool with it. I have a blue one, a pink one, and a black one. I didn't collect all four. Uh, what did I miss out on? Teal. Where's my teal? I mean, come on. Te I didn't get teal, but I like the black ones because they got that old Ericsson look to them. Uh, and the purple is just so 90s. So, yeah, I mean, they were cool, but not cool, and nobody ever bought one. And it says right here, no bills or setup charges. So, yeah, I thought when I bought them, I was going to do something to make them like really cool, and people would be like, "What the hell are you talking on?" I'm just not sure now if I want them to be walkie-talkies or if I just want them to be antiques. Uh, but I thought I'd share them with you because it, it's just so cool, um, so 90s, so uh, internet startup company. The name of the company was Yes.com or Yescom. No, just Yescom because com sounded so techy then, so it wasn't just yes company, it was yes com. And you know, there's an 800 number on here, I'd love to see who's got yes com's 800 number. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. Um, very cool retro tech. Uh, let me know in the comments if you remember these, or at least the commercial, or if you remember staring through the, the glass barrier at Toys R Us um, to, to, to just dream and drool over those expensive objects that you, maybe your parents were never going to buy in a million years like mine. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know if you enjoyed the video and if you would like to see any Frankensteining done on these, let me know and we'll, we'll see what we can do.